When you think of some of the largest whitetails to ever walk this earth, there is almost always a wild story behind how the rack was discovered or harvested. The Milo Hansen buck was shot during gun drives in Canada. The General was a set of sheds that remained hidden to the world in a barn in Missouri for years. The Hole in the Horn buck was found dead on a set of railroad tracks with a mysterious hole in the rack. The Rampala buck was... Well, I'm sure you've heard the numerous conflicting reports about that, dear. It seems that there is always something weird, wild, or controversial about these giants. In more recent news, a new giant typical has been recently discovered in a state that you might not expect. This is the Pennsylvania state record, the Kyrus buck, 1962. It's a 220, gross typical. Ends up netting after all the abnormals and side-to-side -side difference and everything. 202 and 7 eighths, Boone and Crockett. Probably the best deer that will ever come out of, of uh, Pennsylvania. And it is the biggest deer ever from the East Coast. Unbelievable time length, top five in the world. You can see the patina and everything on it. It's just a, it's just a beautiful deer. And the old man passed away and his wife actually sold it at a garage sale. Yeah, it finally got into the hands of a collector and uh, now it's in my collection. Well, not anymore. The original rack is now in the possession of Bass Pro Shops. This particular rack has made quite the journey from the time it was harvested until now. There isn't much known of the origins of this buck because of how old it is. The buck was originally killed by Frederick Kyrus of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania sometime in the early 1960s. For more than 40 years, the rack sat in a barn amongst the collection of Mr. Kyrus' other bucks that he had harvested over the years. After Mr. Kyrus had passed, his wife decided to have a garage sale and the enormous rack was revealed to the public for the very very first time. The rack, along with the rest of the collection, was sold that day and ended up at a small antique store near Boyertown, Pennsylvania, where the original rack spent the next 20 years stashed away in a back room out of sight of the public eye. It wasn't until 2018 that the antlers would see the light of day again. Each year, the Pennsylvania Trappers Association holds an annual rendezvous, and that year it took place at the Perry County Fairgrounds in Port Royal, Pennsylvania. One morning during the rendezvous, a vendor had to retrieve something from his car, and as he did, he noticed a man walking across the parking lot toward the building carrying a very large set of antlers. The vendor approached the man and began asking questions about the enormous rack. The man with the rack didn't know anything about its history, but he had told the vendor he'd recently purchased it from an antique store that was going out of business. When asked how much he'd paid for the antlers, the man replied, I paid $40 for them. The vendor subsequently purchased the rack for $100 from the man in the parking lot and took the antlers inside with him. It turned quite a few heads during the show and after several visitors to the booth and questions about the rack, a man in an adjoining booth offered the vendor $200 and the rack yet again changed hands. Eventually, the third owner sold the antlers to Jay Fish, owner of the New Legends collection. Soon after that, the rack changed hands again and ended up in Keith Snyder's North American Monster Whitetail collection, where we at Exodus first laid eyes on the gigantic rack. From there, it made its way to what we assume will be its final home, amongst all of the other legendary whitetails housed at the Wonders for Wildlife Museum in Springfield, Missouri. Bass Pro Shops recently sent a replica to the Pennsylvania State Game Commission that now hangs in their office headquarters in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This is the new number one firearms typical buck in Pennsylvania. Takes over the new number one spot. This deer, 202 and 78 inches of antler. It's got a 21 inch uh, inside spread, 28 inch main beams. Okay, quite a deer. I'll tell you what, what a beautiful buck. And thanks again to our friends at Bass Pro Shops. And we can't wait for everybody who comes by Harrisburg, come check this buck out. With three tines over 13 inches long and six total that exceed 10 inches, it's easy to see where the high score comes from. The 219 and 2 8 inch gross typical score places it in legendary company among the top 25 highest grossing typical whitetails ever recorded. The net score of 202 and 7 8 inches puts it solidly in the number nine spot all time in the Boone and Crockett record book. It is also now the Pennsylvania state typical record as well as the largest typical ever documented as being from so far east in North America. To put it in perspective, its left antler, scoring a whopping 102 and 3 8 inch, is only one inch less than that of the right antler of the general. If it was scored soon after the 60 day drying period, it would have overtaken the John Breen buck that was the official world record at that time. The 206 and 1 8 inch James Jordan buck from Wisconsin took even longer to be officially scored, so the Kairos buck could well have been an official world record for many years. As hunters, we always talk about the what ifs. 
If it was measured soon after the 60 day drying period and the rack didn't have five and four eighths inches of abnormal growth deductions, it would have had a net score of 208 and seven eighth inches. What is significant about that is that it would have taken until 1993 when Milo Hansen shot his 213 and five eighths inch Saskatchewan giant to dethrone it as the world record typical whitetail. Of course, 200 inch net typicals aren't common. Including the recent entry of the Dustin Huffbuck, there are only two dozen or so known racks to exist. To put such racks rarity into perspective, Boone and Crockett has been documenting whitetails as far back as 1830, and still, only a handful have ever made this distinguished list. What makes this buck truly historic is the fact that none of the current top 10 typical or non-typicals have come from the Northeast, much less Pennsylvania specifically. Being a native of Pennsylvania myself, this deer sparks the question, what else is out there in the Keystone State? After years of antler restrictions in the state, bigger and better bucks are finally being taken. Will Pennsylvania ever produce another world-class whitetail? Only time will tell.